Hey guys, welcome back. We're doing a different type of video today. We're going to do a how to edit con photos in Lightroom. Just the basics. It can get pretty complicated and I'm not an expert, but I do know how to do what I know how to do. All right, I've got some examples here. These are raw files, so you can't actually see them unless you process them first through a program like Lightroom or Photoshop. If you're not shooting in RAW and you have a DSLR, go into your settings, change it from JPEG to RAW. It will take up a lot more room on your SD card, but you can do a lot more changes because there's so much more data and there's so many more refined pixels and you can really refine your photos. All right, so I've got Lightroom open. First thing we're going to do, you can see I've got my con collections. In each con I've got folders. Each one, each folder is a collection and then they go into a bin which is called a collection set. So we're going to make a new collection and we're just going to call it example. I'm not going to include selected photos because I don't have them in yet. And create. Okay, so we're going to go to the import button, find our folder, examples folder, and here they are. If you don't want one, you can just click uncheck the box and it won't be included. We're going to go over to add to collection, find our collection. Click import. If you don't put it into a collection, you can lose them because it goes into this previous import and then it disappears. So make sure you put it into collection when you first brought it in. So this is our library view. You can see this tab right here. This gives you all the photos in your collection. You can go through and add stars or colors or flags. And then you can sort through the ones. So if you go through, you've got 500 photos, and you go through and you five star the ones you want to work on, then you can go in here and say, all right, I want only the five stars. Well, we're not going to do that today because we've only got three. You can also do the loop view, which makes them big so you can see. If you've got multiple instances, you can go through. and pick out which ones you want. So first we just want to do a quick develop, make it nice so we can post it. So we're going to go over here to the develop and I'm going to do this real quick and show you what I do for each photo and then I'll go through and do it step by step. I change the color mode. I don't need to change my balance because it's very good. I turn it up and it looks like I'm doing too much, but I'm not. This computer has a very high resolution and a very bright screen, so I have to do extra in order for it to look good on a regular screen. So I've done the exposure, the highlights, the whites, clarity, and dehaze. I'm not going to crop this one because I like the way it looks. I'm going to turn off the sharpening because it makes noise that I don't want. I'm going to enable profile corrections so that my photo is not distorted from the lens. And then I'm going to add a little bit of vignette just to make his face pop and give some depth. And that's it. All done. That's a simple, basic correction. Now if I want to, I'm done with it, I want to export it and post it to the internet, go back to the library, right up here, back to library, 
and then I click export and then I want to put it in a new folder called use so I can find it easier put on my watermark I'll show you how to do that later and export now it made a new folder and there it is now it's a JPEG so I can post it anywhere There we go. There's my watermark. All done. Now we're going to do another edit of this photo, but I don't want to change this one. So I'm going to right click down here on the film strip, do create virtual copy. This copy is exactly the same as the one I just did. I'm going to change everything back. If you double click on the arrows, it will go back to zero. For this one I've decided I'm going to crop so it's just his face. So we go over here to the crop button. And I'm going to straighten it. A lot of people I've noticed don't realize that you can straighten it. If you come down so you've got the double arrow, you can turn it however you need it. And I'm going to use this line on the amp and line it up with the grid. So now it's perfectly straight. I'm going to come up here. This is a rule of thirds grid. You can change that to a different overlay grid, whichever one you prefer. I like this one. I like to have the, one of the eyes I'm not liking that there we go I like to have one of the eyes be in the one of these cross points it gives you a nice diagonal you can see over here what it looks like without the overlay and say done. So then, since I know I need to change and make it brighter, I'm going to bring it up. I know it has to be at least 101.11. Bring up my highlights. If you're not sure what something does, take it all the way up, take it all the way down, go up and down, go in the middle, and just kind of roll it up and down until you see something that you like. Shadows, I don't tend to mess with them because you can see, say I want it to be brighter so I'm going to turn up the shadows so the shadows are brighter. But then you get all this noise that we do not want. And when you turn it down then it's flat. And you lose a lot of your dimension. So we're going to leave the shadows alone. This is just for con photography because it's already so dark and you're in the fighting with the low light situation. If you were doing an outside photo during the day, you probably would do something different. This is just for con photography. All right, so we put the whites up, whites down. And I have to do it so that it's a little bit too bright. Same with the blacks. Don't want to mess with it. Put it back. Texture kind of does a weird thing where it like outlines the pixels and you can see that just looks really kind of gross. Like it highlighted all of his freckles and all of his pores and all of his wrinkles and all of his hair looks really fake. His beard looks really weird. So we, and if we take it off, then it gets blurry, which we don't want. Clarity I do use, but I only use a little bit. I mean, you can turn it all the way up and it looks cool. It looks like a nice pencil drawing or something. Sometimes I do that. 
if it seems to warrant it. Um, and if you turn it the other way, then it's it looks plastic. Okay, my screen recorder cut out there, and I've had to change location. So hopefully it's okay now. All right, I was talking about clarity. All right, so I do like a little bit of clarity. Just to give a, a little bit of sharpness, a little bit of definition. I also like dehaze. It's really good for landscapes and other outdoor things. It really makes the sky pop. Um, gives it a little bit of a glow if you take it away. Sometimes I'll do if I'm doing one of the ladies like Rachel Miner, who usually has some glitter makeup on sparkles i'll do a little bit of glow just so it looks nice and pretty i'm gonna add just a little bit just to add some definition vibrance is your friend saturation is not your friend vibrance is a lot more natural i mean obviously if you get all the way up then it gets crazy if you go all the way down there's still a little bit of color I found with my new camera, I don't need to do vibrance at all. Um, saturation, like immediately it starts looking fake. If you add to it, it gets very orange and pink very quickly. You can turn it, I like a nice washed out look sometimes. This is one way to do black and white, but it's not the best way. Um, um, saturation. You can change things. Orange is really the only thing I ever mess with. Like if I'm doing, Misha gets really orange under these lights. Sometimes I'll take his orange down a bit. Jensen is fine, he doesn't need that. Um, sometimes if they're holding a mic in their hand and it's like bright green, I'll turn it down so you, it turns it gray. Um, hue, you can change the color. That's not really a necessary thing. Luminance, if you take stuff away, it turns it kind of a weird grayish. Don't mess with that either. Just do the saturation. Sharpening, it will automatically set it at 40. See, it grays out, that's its baseline. But you can see it really it makes noise where there isn't noise because it sharpens all the pixels. So with this camera I've got, I've been turning it down. So it's a little bit blurrier. When you look at a normal size, it doesn't look blurry at all. Um, noise reduction, you can use that, but I'll show you what happens. If you do a little bit, it's fine. It'll take away some of the darkness. If you do too much, then it gets too soft and it looks plastic. And we don't want that. So you might do a little bit just to brighten things up. Um, color. It will even things out. If you put too much, you see his lips, his teeth are pink and his eyes are flesh colored. If you don't, if you take it away, then you've got all these unnecessary colors that you don't want. If you just leave it at the default, it's usually fine, which is 25. Lens corrections. Every lens has a distortion because of the curvature. So if you click on that, then go on, it should know what your lens is from the metadata on the raw file. If it doesn't, you can go in and find it and click on these and it'll give you all of them. We're not going to mess with it. Um, I always do a little bit of vignette. It just makes the subject pop and gives you more depth. Um, you can do a lot. You can do white. It depends on your photo and what you want to do. I used to do a little bit. You can change 
how big it is. If you want a spotlight or just a touch in the corners. And you can change if it's here. We'll do the feathering so you can see exactly where it is. The round, you can make it round or oval or just the corners. Oval is usually good. Definitely feather, don't make it a circle, that's weird. And you can add grain, which we're trying to take away grain, so no thank you. And there you go. In a later video, I'll show you how to take out these mic stand cords. Um, here, and we're going to export this. Go back to library so you get your export button. Export. Watermark. Put it in the use folder. Export. Use unique names because I've got two versions of that. All right, and then now we're going to go to the next photo. That Jared. He's a little bit darker because he was in a different light and he's not quite as focused. Oh, that's three. So I've decided that I'm going to make him black and white because it's easier to sharpen things up when it's in black and white. So we're going to go over to develop. I like to leave it on color and then take the saturation down for each color. And then since orange is the primary skin tone, I add a little bit in. It gives it a little bit of depth. So it's not a flat gray. Change it to portrait. And we know that we have to do the exposure. And we know we have to do the highlights. And the whites. A little bit of clarity, and you can see how much sharper he's looking in the black and white. I can add some contrast, which will make it darker, but then I can go in and brighten things up again. He's getting some weird spots with this. So I think I'm going to turn it down a little bit. There we go. Turn down the sharpening. Enable profile corrections. Vignette. Done. Might actually turn them up a little bit more. And there we go. Here, I'm going to make a virtual copy and I'll show you. I hit the reset button. I'm going to reset it back to the original. I'm going to go to the black and white button. I know I need to turn it up. I want his skin to be brighter. So I'll do the orange. Make his shirt brighter too. If you do red brighter, then their lips get weird. So we leave that. Down. Okay, so now let's look at the difference. See how much flatter that one is? This one he's got, you can really see the curvature of his neck 
and his cheeks. It's just a little bit of something. All right, now we're going to do what happens when you have the wrong setting on your camera, and this is what you get. And you have to try and fix this. Clearly, this is not the right color. It's too bright. We have to see what we can do. So we're going to do portrait. That helps a lot. White balance. We take our white eyedropper. I know this is white. It's a Kleenex. That's too bright. There we go. It's better. Let's bring these highlights down. Let's bring the whites down. Bring down the exposure. Bring down the vibrance. Bring up the dehaze. Bring up the clarity. Bring down the blacks. The shadows. Let's do change vibrance a little bit. I'm going to take some red down. Jared's pretty red looking. Jensen looks fine, but Jared's pretty red. Um, you can see all this noise from the sharpening. Turn that down. Not that it helped too much. You can do a little bit of noise reduction. Just to help smooth things out. Because it was the wrong settings, it's not real crisp. Didn't really good get a good focus. Do a little bit. Smooth it out, back to fit. A little bit more color. We do our profile correction. Priority. Right, and then I'm going to crop it. There we go. Done. All right, there you go. So you, you can go ahead and go into your Lightroom and start playing with stuff. And again, it's your photo. Make it how you want it. It's your art. So there you go. Go ahead, get started. If you enjoyed watching, let me know in the comments what else you'd like me to show you. Um, I'll do another a more advanced where we go into masking and gradients and spot removal and getting rid of those mic stands that are in every freaking shot. There you go. I hope you enjoyed it and if you like some more see some more go ahead and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.